Hi, welcome back. In part three of this series, we will focus on the architecture and configuration of the application you launched in the first video and customized in the second. So the assumptions then are that you launched the application in video one, that you customized it in video two, and that you also accessed the application source in GitHub as described in that second video. As a reminder though, you can find the application source at AWS Labs on GitHub. At this point, we've seen our application as it exists in the management console. We've also opened the app up and used it and saw that it stores information about customers who want to know when our product launches. That data goes in DynamoDB, and the application also uses the simple notification service to send you an email when a new customer signs up. Now let's address the cliffhanger we left you with at the end of the second video. Where did the DynamoDB table and the SNS topic come from, and how did your application configuration learn about them? Let's talk about where the table and topic come from first. So if you do nothing else, an Elastic Beanstalk environment looks like this. It's automatically load balanced, and the server capacity automatically scales. It can also store log files for you in S3, and provides a monitoring and metrics dashboard. Your Beanstalk environment doesn't automatically come with a DynamoDB table or an SNS topic. We'll call this a resource customization. You can easily customize resources in Elastic Beanstalk with configuration files. A configuration file is a file with a .config extension. Am I blowing your mind here yet? It is YAML formatted. Uh, it declares other AWS resources you want created along with your application and you save the configuration file in a folder named .eb extensions at the top level of your application. Let's look at the configuration file for our sample application here. See, here's my eb extensions folder. It's at the top level of my app. I have one .config file, setup.config. You can have multiple config files that do different things. They're processed in alphabetical order based on the file name. The resources key is where we go to define resources. Our first resource is called startup signups table, and we see its type is a DynamoDB table. The properties then tell DynamoDB how the table should be created. We've just provisioned one unit of read and write capacity for this table. We would, of course, increase these values to accommodate more load before deploying to production, and we can make these changes just like we make code changes, update the value in the file, and upload the changed application to Elastic Beanstalk. Beanstalk will take care of modifying the properties of the table if it already exists. So it makes it really simple to scale our DynamoDB table performance out or in as needed. We create the SNS topic similarly and use its properties to subscribe an administrator's email address to be notified when a message is published. Okay, so it's great that we can use the resources block and tell Elastic Beanstalk the things it should create for our application. Now we need to tell our application where those things are via its configuration. The Flask framework makes it easy to load configuration values from various places. In our case, we'd like to create a file that has our app config in key equals value format. In addition to creating resources, our Elastic Beanstalk .config files let us customize things on our servers, including creating files. In this files block, we tell EB to create a file at var app app.config we tell it the file permissions and we specify the contents of the file. In this example, the first line of var app app.config will be aws underscore region equals and the ref syntax dynamically injects the current region we're running in, for example, us-west-1. The second line has the value startup underscore signup underscore table and the ref value injects the name of the DynamoDB table created above in the resources section. The order here doesn't matter. The files block could come before resources. Elastic Beanstalk is smart enough to infer dependencies and will do things in the correct order for you automatically. Finally, we can use the setup.config file to inject environment variables into our EB servers. Flask allows you to indicate the application config file to load based on an environment variable. So we set the app underscore config environment var to equal slash var slash app slash app dot config. Flask also supports debugging, which is something you definitely do not want turned on in production. We expose Flask debugging as an environment variable and tell our application.py to enable debug mode based on that variable. This lets us turn debugging on and off from the Elastic Beanstalk Management Console. Very cool. 
It's easy to get your app up and running with Elastic Beanstalk, but you're still able to customize your application and environment as needed. The cool thing about this is that your customizations are automated, and because you make them in these YAML formatted dot .config files, they're version controlled alongside your application. For more information on customizing your app with config files, head over to the Elastic Beanstalk documentation, where you'll find detailed docs specific to all of the languages and platforms Elastic Beanstalk supports, including Java, .NET, Ruby, PHP, Node.js, and Python. And finally, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the AWS channel here on YouTube and visit the AWS Application Management blog for developer-focused blog posts about Elastic Beanstalk.